If you think things have been bad for Jesus and his disciples in the first three seasons of The Chosen, they're about to get much worse. We've already discussed season four's first three episodes, and now we take a spoiler-free look at episodes four through six of season four of the hit series, The Chosen. In the aftermath of recent tragic events, the spiritual fortitude of the disciples is truly tested. These trials appear to bring some of the followers closer to Jesus while creating seeds of doubt in others. And as Jesus warns that his sacrifice is quickly approaching, they struggle to understand the depths of that unavoidable reality. Even in the midst of this turbulent time, Jesus continues to perform miracles and spread his message that changes the hearts and minds of multitudes. But it also adds fuel to the fire of those that hate and fear him, and the results could potentially become lethal. Now let me explain that I am not an emotional person. I didn't cry at my wedding or the birth of my children, but within the first five minutes of episode four, I was tearing up. Because episodes one through three ended with such a bang, now these episodes must recoup from that wreckage. And the result forces the tone of the story into what I recently realized may be my favorite genre of storytelling, and that is the bromance. Just last year, I was moved by the brotherly bond in The Iron Claw. The year before showed two enemies becoming best friends in the Indian film RRR. And a couple years before that, the film that was the epiphany for my love of this genre was Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood about the bond between an actor and his stuntman. Of course, with a sprinkle of the Manson murders. Very violent. Anyway, with this story focused on 12 men following the Messiah, their bonding into brothers is inevitable. There's a moment where one disciple wants to comfort another disciple in deep grief, but he doesn't know what to say or do, so instead of doing anything, he just decides to be there for his friend. He gently places his hand on the other disciple's chest, and immediately that disciple grabs his hand to hold it. I just felt the breath leave my chest as I watched this unintentional, almost guttural response to kindness. There's another moment where a father visits his son, and the son simply says, don't give up on me, knowing that his work is going to bring unrest to his family. A tear trickles down the father's cheek as he quietly assures his son of his support. I think it's those kinds of moments that set the chosen apart from many films I watch. The filmmakers don't feel the need for bombastic gestures to evoke pathos. It's almost the restraint of the characters that creates a deeper emotional response from me as the viewer. Additionally, from a filmmaking perspective, let me try to explain just how well this show is produced. Early in the series, you can notice that some shortcuts were taken, set design, costumes, etc. Now, with the show's success and stability, the filmmakers have the freedom to focus on their art, and it shows. There's a scene early in the film where Jesus and his disciples encounter a man. He is furious with them. First of all, the location is stunning, filmed on a dirt road with beautiful mountains in the distance somewhere in Utah. Then you look at the writing. Both sides are dealing with deep grief, but while Jesus and his disciples respond with deep sadness and remorse, the other man responds with anger and hatred. The interaction is a fascinating glimpse into what I'll describe it as two sides of the same coin. The result is sad, exciting, and heart-wrenching. It really is a masterclass in storytelling, and I think it's important to express just how high the quality of filmmaking is here, but in the past, so many faith-based films have been trademarked by lower quality. Now that I've shared how much I respect and appreciate the series, I, I feel the need to explain that as a film-going experience, The Chosen, specifically these three episodes, feels a bit like a chore to watch in the theater. With over three hours of runtime, with a five-minute intermission, the aspect that I love so much about the series, that it takes its time to tell the story and allow us to get to know each character, in that condensed setting, it starts to feel a bit melodramatic. I've never thought that before, but with the arc of the story hitting such a high at the end of episode three, here, episodes four through six, are primarily primarily a response to that action, and it's clearly setting up for a crazy and climactic final two episodes that will certainly hit another high, but this is the lull between those extremes. 
I don't want to discourage anyone from seeing this in theater because it is vital to the storyline. It dives deep into doubt, feelings of failure, prioritizing the right things, and seeking God. It explores the tradition of Hanukkah in a way I've never seen. It foreshadows upcoming events, and it introduces another joke about fruits. First it was dates, then apricots, now pomegranates. Though I wonder if this may be easier to digest in its designed episodic format, The Chosen Season 4, Episodes 4 through 6, continue to trudge their way to the ultimate sacrifice that we as Christians base our whole lives upon. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it hurts, and sometimes we must be patient. This is an example of the latter. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel which now has six months of reviews, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any of my future reviews.